Okay, we're going to look now at how to set up voting slides in Active Inspire. Um, we're going to use the handset's Active Vote, um, and then we'll look at Active Expression in another video. Um, there's a couple of ways of getting sort of template pages onto your site for questioning. Um, one way is to use the browser, so you would go to View, Browser, and then go to the Resource Browser. You'll find in Shared Flip Chart Pages and then under flip chart builder there's lots of sections with different templates in there so you could let's say if you wanted to do group discussions you could choose that sort of thing and just drag it across and that's you got your template in there um, but I'm not going to use the browser for this one what I'm going to do is just on a blank page I'm going to right click I need to have this sorry, I need to have the arrow tool on here and then right click and go to insert question and that's going to insert a question slide for us Okay, so we've got lots of options for a question type. Multi-choice is the one we're going to use. Um, the other ones are really for using with Active Expression kits. Um, I'm going to say there's only going to be four answers and insert a new question page. I could do it just adding the questions to the current page if I wanted to, but we'll just do a new one. So now I've got to choose our template. So when you scroll down here, if you notice some of them, you can make the you can make them bigger just by using this wheel on the right. Some of them have got ABC as their buttons and some have 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now I'm using Active Vote that's got A to F on it. And even though I know the next slide is going to ask me do I want numbers or do I want letters, I'm going to choose letters on these templates because even though you choose um, letters in the next question, if the template has numbers on it, it stays with numbers. It seems very strange. Okay. So I'm going to choose this one here. So we know that's got the question at the top and then four answers with the letters underneath. So I'll click next. And then we've got to enter the question text. So we're just saying, what's three times two? And what it says here, choose the type of option label, alphabetic A to F or numeric one to six. If your template already has numbers and you keep that A to F, it's going to stay with the template with the numbers, which I think is quite confusing. Number of responses for each qu for this question, there's only one correct answer to 3 times 2, so we'll keep that as 1, and we'll say there's a time limit of 60 seconds on it. And we'll click Next. Okay, let's say we want to tell it already that we know we're going to put number 6 into the question, the answer D, so it's going to be number 6. So we can say that's what the correct answer is going to be. We don't want a follow-on question, so I'm just going to finish at that point. And here's our template up here. So it says, what is 3 times 2? And we've got A, B, C, or D there. So if I now just take the text tool on the right-hand side here, I'm going to choose quite big numbers. And we're going to say... OK. So we've got our numbers in place here, but they're not very they're not lined up very well and it looks just a little bit messy. There's a few things I could do. I could sort of line it up quite close to the letters and make them all look quite neat that way, but I'd like it right in the middle there and I'd like them bigger than this. So a couple of tips I'll show you. I'm gonna click on the number here, and then all I need to do is this one that's got the big star on it and the arrow going up. I can just use that, click on it, and it'll increase the size of the number. So I can make that as big as I want there. Okay, so I can do that for all those as well. The other thing I can do is if I go to Edit and Grid, it brings up a grid over this bit I'm working on. And if, if I want to make the grid smaller, I can click on these ones at the side here. So I can click the minus and I get more squares and so on, and the plus as well. But I'm using these squares for alignment of my numbers. So once I'm happy with that, I'll click Close just to, to make sure I'm happy with the grid. And I can click on my letter here, and I'm going to move it to the line just above the letter. And so it's sitting on that line. So I now know I'm going to increase the size of the 4 here as well. It needs to cover just over 3 squares in its size.
So I've maybe done it one too big, so I can use this one to move it back down one. So there we go. So we're at the right size. So I know if I put it in this line here, it's going to be fairly much in line with the three. Um, and how many have they got it from? So that's one, two, three, four, five. Four and a half, five from this letter. So that's one, two, three, four and a half, five. So if we put that there, we know that's going to look quite good. And you just carry on the same thing for the five and the six as well. Um, so what I'll do, I'll pause the video now and I'll go and do those and you can catch me up once they're completed. Okay, so I've done now the five and the six, I've made it the right size and you can see that's pretty much in line with the grid with the three and the five is pretty much in line with the six there on the grid as well. So now what we do need to do is just get rid of the grid. So if we, can, if we go to edit and grid, you get a wee box in the corner here and we just untick that to say the grid's no longer visible. Close and there we go. So they're now all lined up nice and neatly. I've connected up my active vote. The one thing you need to do always is connect your active expression and your active vote before you start the Promethean software. You need to get your USB connections in place first of all. So I'm not going to have the vote on this slide. So if I click on this green button here, what it's going to say is there's no expression devices registered. Do we want to register them now? Now, we're not using active expression, so we don't want to register these now. But as default, um, active inspire is set up to target active expression devices. So the first thing we need to do is tell it that we're using active vote. So I'll show you how we do that. So we're going to say no to this. And I'm going to choose the one to the right there, which is the express poll. So if I click on that, we get this little circle appearing now on the screen. So if you go into the middle of that, we get more options around the side. Um, I'll show you that again. So just a circle, move over it, more options. And we're going to choose this cog one here. Okay, so this icon here is to target active expression devices. And this one here is for targeting active vote devices. Now it's an active vote device that we're using. So we need to click into this one and select that. Okay, now what we can do now is get rid of this grid bit here. I'll get rid of that toolbar there. And then if we now choose the green button, we get our voting up there. So this is a 32 handset kit, so people can start voting now. So I'll get a few of the handsets out and we'll have a few votes. Okay, so we'll just say these people are in the class. And we'll say stop. We see the countdown there that we put in, we said it was 60 second countdown. And we're going to say stop now. So it says one or more users have failed to answer that because we've got a 32 handset kit. So I don't want to allow them to retry. And so there's our spread of answers. Now we have an invalid response there because we've said it's a four answer multi-choice question. On one of them, I think I pushed F as the button. It was F or E, um, and so it just puts it up as invalid. And we can do the normal things with this. Um, along the top here, I can change this to who answered what. We can do a list of who answered what. Vertical graph, pie chart, and a text report. And with any of these, so if I say I like to look at the pie chart, I can use this one here and paste the results into my flip chart. So if I click that now, there we go, there's the results of our poll into the flip chart and that's just a graphic object. I can resize that and put that at the side if I want to print out these nodes, for example, for people. Um, then we can do that. And that's how to set up um, the votes, uh, the voting system using Active Vote in Active Inspire. I'd really advise that you look um, at the document at the, st at the top of this page um, that speaks about designing effective questioning for classroom response teaching because um, that can really be crucial um, having good questions that test your students.